Alhamdulillah, I didn't want to go home, so I came to this Jaro spot. I came last time. I don't know. This is not a part of the previous video. I'm just chilling now. I just don't. I don't want to go home. I'm, I'm actually very, 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 very sad about uh, not getting that job. <laughs> so I don't want to be alone right now. Uh, not be alone. Be alone in private, I guess, because wherever I go, I'm going to be alone. Barakallahu fikum. The restaurant is kind of filled. <laughs> I'm not eating in there. Alhamdulillah, the food is good though. I got I got new things today. I'm, I'm not showing you guys the food. I always say that, that I end up showing you guys sometimes. I just don't like making promises. I don't know if I'll keep it or not. Because you know what happens when the food comes out, you just start eating. And I'm hungry inside. So <laughs> that combination <clears throat> means food devour faster, food eat quickly. But you know what I'm saying, right? <clears throat> Alhamdulillah for everything. Um, I don't want to go home. I just want to eat. Like, you know. I don't want to go back to the park here, that's kind of hot. I guess I'm going to go back home and eat. Alhamdulillah for everything. And I'm sad about that job. Why Why would they do that to me? They They know I don't have a certification. You said in your job description, no certification needed. <clears throat> why put me through all of that, you know? I'm not, like, I would never apply to a job that I'm not qualified for. I'm not going to waste anyone's time. You know, like my, my hopes got up, you know, they put me through the first stage interview, it went great, second stage interview, it went amazing, you know, they, they praised me, they said a lot of good things about me, but then in the end, to tell me, oh, we're not gonna accept you because we don't have, you don't have something that we didn't really ask for to begin with, kind of sucks. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm gonna be upset about this for a couple of days, <laughs> and then, you know, inshallah, it will pass, <clears throat> just gotta go back on the hunt, I already started applying for other jobs. I've been applying for jobs in between and everything. Don't, a lesson I learned throughout life, don't don't put all your eggs in one basket, you know, just because uh, you think you're going to do something doesn't mean you're going to do it, you know. You plan and Allah plans. Walillah alhamd. Barakallahu fikum wa jazakum Allahu khayrun. Alhamdulillah, today's Wednesday. Alhamdulillah, Friday is soon. Inshallah, everything is good. I still have another project going on that is inshallah going to be successful bi I hope it is successful I hope it's not gonna be uh, something big and um, yeah I may, be my, I may tell you guys about it I may not tell you guys about it I don't know I need to see how this works out I need to feel out the situation inshallah inshallah I'll share about it if it's if I feel like if it's a good thing and appropriate for me to share maybe I could give you guys some benefits pertaining to my experiences containing it and hopefully it works out. <clears throat> so I have that on the side to look forward to. Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah. Barakallahu fikum. I asked the question a lot earlier today. Is parents difficult to communicate with? And I think I think parents can be very difficult to communicate with. A problem with many parents. Many parents, even our generation, uh, they have the mindset that I was not able to go through this or experience this or enjoy this so that now I have to make sure my child does it and they don't realize they're projecting on their child you're making your child live the life that you wish you had lived that you gotta you gotta let your child be of course doing all of the things that are mandatory uh, in terms of Islam and education and all of these things you put that in there but to make your child live the dream that you wish you live this is not good this is very unhealthy so many uh, parents, they're forcing their daughters to go throughout college until, you know, they finish masters or doctorates. And they realize, you know, at that age, you know, what, what is it, 27, 20, 30, whatever, it's very difficult to get married, for, for the women to get married. Very difficult, very difficult. You know, if you're a man, if you're a man and you have daughters, you need to be looking, at, you know, for a husband for her, you know. And, and to be understandable, I have brothers my age. If I had a daughter that was 18, whatever, I don't care. I know brothers that are upright, strong, responsible brothers. And many of them, alhamdulillah, I would contact, go down the list and see who's looking to get married. And, you know, marry my daughter to her, you know. Marry my daughter to him. <clears throat> you need to be responsible in, in these types of regards. Uh, a problem is, in our time, in our time, is that people don't have this on their mind. To look for a, a, a spouse or to work or look for a spouse for their children you know and when the time it comes to look for them 
and you you live in a very mixed society and you realize oh my child does not want to marry somebody from my culture or back home or whatever it is because you know you live in america and you know all of a sudden your your bengali son only likes latinas or something like this all right i'm not bengali <laughs> but i'm giving the example right so what are you gonna do in that situation where he does not find his own people attractive or anything like that you know what i'm saying so i think a part of fixing this is just to be a part of community establish um friendships and brotherhood and um work off of that and have your tawakkul in Allah you know I think when I when I asked the question about the difficulty of communicating with parents is that some parents don't understand this you know their daughter may be 15 16 or their son may be 15 16 whatever and you know they desire marriage at that age you know and our society is not built for marriage at that age is really not it's really not you know the babying the children this and that and the third the maturity doesn't kick in until 30 years old whatever it is and it's just sad I'm not saying they should get married at 15 or 16. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, some parents, they just shut it down immediately without trying to understand the difficulty of their children are going through, especially if those children have taqwa of Allah. They have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they just want to get married so they don't fall into sin, you know? They don't fall into zina. They don't fall into flirting with the opposite gender. you sending them to Islamic schools, mixed gendered schools, all of these things. What do you think is going to happen? I've been through all of that. I went to Islamic school. I went to public high school. I went to public uh, Islamic high school. I taught at a at a Islamic school, multiple Islamic schools. I taught and volunteered at. I see all of that. I see what happens to these children. You know what I'm saying? I, I've seen it. You know, you think your child is safe? That. I mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. A person said a wise statement, and they said the reason why many people fall into the sin of masturbation is because they don't have anything to do. Because they're just not busy enough. You know, if you're busy, if you make your children busy and involve them into martial arts, involve them into a sport, involve them into some type of a, of a club or a, a situation or like a, I would say like a club at the masjid with the sisters, a book reading club, something like this to keep yourself busy. You know, let them build friends. You know, everybody knows that this is a problem, falling into sins and desires, especially the extreme ease of it. You know, so be supportive parents. Understand that they're human beings. And it's very hard for parents to listen to this and to understand this. That, you know, my daughter or my son is going to be turned on. He's going to be falling. It's hard. It's like cringe to hear this, right? But it's a reality. And if we don't accept this reality, we could be assisting in their downfall of sins. Some of the ulama say it's more important to help your children get married than you making hajj. To help them get married than you making hajj. Some of the ulama say... Uh, and this is obviously incorrect But one of the ulama I'm not going to mention his name One of the scholars you said It sins upon the father For all of the sins that his sons commit Because he did not help him get married If he does not help him get married Understand? Of course if the son is responsible in all of this But of course um, the, the, the one who does the sin Is the one who obtains the sin um, Allah knows best That's a difference of opinion between, between uh, pertaining to this I remember it in the text I remember what it was said in the footnotes Some ulama say It's like uh, You know when you, you teach an evil You get the sin of that evil Something like this You know And when you teach a good You get the, 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 the good deed of that good You know Something like this So if you have to prepare yourself For all of these matters You know It's, it's difficult But it doesn't have to be difficult It doesn't have to be difficult Just to be open minded When your kids let them come to you, let them speak to you, let them, you know, sometimes, alhamdulillah, some some parents have a very good relationship with their children, and I admire that, walillah, alham, they're not very, you know, what's the word, they're not, they don't shut them down as soon as they say something that may sound, you know, crazy or whatever it is, to just hear them out, you know, if your child didn't do nothing, if your child did not, you know, get in trouble or, or anything like that, they just want to speak to you, let them speak to you, let them speak to you, you know, hear them out. May Allah purify the parents, all of the parents that are these Muslim parents. There was this um, one sister um, many, many years ago, maybe it was like when I was in my early 20s, I sought for marriage, and she was around the same exact age as me. And um, her father, unfortunately, you know, he said no because I'm not from, you know, their country. So I put together a document about, you know, a hadith about, you know, the, the what's the word I'm looking for? The evil. Of, of this type of a mindset And you know she read the document to her father And her father's like well I'm not racist You know I'm not racist You know if he was white and a doctor I would marry you to him Even though that's racism in of itself <laughs> Right So parents a lot of parents They may not have knowledge or they may not have understanding Or anything like this So I'm talking to you who, who is listening to this Expect this Expect um, 
uh, the reality of other people's situations so you could avoid it. Some of you uh, that are from Yemen and Palestine and all of these other Arab countries, along, along with those from the Desi countries, you may never be able to marry somebody outside of your culture, outside of your ethnic background because of your parents. This is not, this is not a correct practice. It's not wrong to marry within your culture, but to, to limit your children to that, this is you know, especially haram. And you think because your culture is better, or you don't want to contaminate the bloodline and all of these weird things. May Allah, I seek refuge in Allah from that. We all seek refuge in Allah from that. Those of you who are listening to this, overcome this. Be the generation that leaves these innovative practices and, and tribalism and culturalisms behind. Understand? Build strong ties that, are, that is based upon the Quran and the Sunnah. Walillah alhamd. Listen to your children. Be, be prepared to listen to your children. Study. Learn Islam. Learn seeking knowledge. Learn, seek knowledge. Learn about how to be a good parent. Learn how to be a wholesome person. Right? A lot of people. Some people who seek knowledge to become harsh and rigid, uh, these types of negative behaviors. Being harsh and rigid is okay for the appropriate situation, such as those who attack Islam and those who make Islam look uh, like a horrible thing, the extremists, the innovators, those people, the liberalists, those who try to water down our religion until there's nothing left, all of these things. No, we put our foot down with this. We don't have... Uh, uh, we're not going to say extreme kindness to them pertaining to these things. We'll educate them, but if they persist, we put our foot down and we put down the evidences in front of them. Walillah alhamd. But but other than that, other than that, manners is very important. You're, you're communicating with your your husband, your wife, your your children, your parents, your community, your brothers, your sisters, in Islam and bloodline. All of these things is. is Good manners is a very beautiful thing. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the heaviest thing on the scale on the Day of Judgment is good manners. Walillah alhamd. So alhamdulillah, this is something that we have to learn and reflect, understand, and also taking and listening to elder teachers. I'm telling you, like, nobody wants to hear me in this, especially women, especially you young women. You love listening to, and I'm going to call it out, attractive young uh, Islamic teachers, this is, you love listening to them. You love listening to popular people. You don't like. You don't. I never heard anybody, <laughs> to the best of my opinion, to the best of my opinion, to the best of my ability, listening to somebody old, like studying from them, studying from them. You know, I listen to Sheikh Saleh Fawzan. Did you study anything from Sheikh Saleh Fawzan? Did you study any text, any book, any lecture? So, so on, so on, and so forth. And not only that, those who speak your language, listening to somebody old. Because you, your language is, is probably not Arabic. Your language is what you would relate to the most. So for me, listening to Sheikh Farid Abdullah, he speaks English. And I, I, I was like, you have a connection with somebody who speaks your language and, and the way how they speak. Sheikh Farid is, is old, he's eldered, he's eldered. Walillah alhamd, may Allah sustain him. I learned so much manners from him. To just to be easy going and kind and, and wholesome, you know, trying my best to reach that level. Khair insha'Allah And you don't see these types of qualities with the youth With the, with the young students of knowledge You don't see, especially the, the popular speakers and stuff like this You don't see these types of qualities all the time right? You, 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 don't, you don't see it You may see something like it Where they are um, making the audience feel good This is a different thing This is a different thing pertaining to This is like the skill of talking The skill of speaking I'm talking about manners, good manners <clears throat> So, from my opinion on that, not only listen, reading the text, not only reading Ala Dab al Mufrad and Minhaj al Qasidin and these books, these beautiful books that teach manners, you need somebody, you need a good teacher that has good manners as well. So, uh, primarily, and preferably an elder. One of the videos I couldn't upload, so it's going to sound really off, off topic, um, but if I could reiterate. Yeah, after I said you think your child is safe, I went to go on to talk about the desires that may fall into, the ease of the sin of masturbation in our time, the ease of the sin of zina in our time. All of this, all of these things, is so easy to fall into, especially for the youth, those who are very savvy. You take away their phone, they're gonna have another access to sin, especially if they don't have taqwa of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Understand this? So may Allah protect us. Then I went and I continued to talk about just keeping the kids busy, enrolling them in programs and in clubs and activities just to keep them busy. Especially a part of this has to be seeking knowledge. It has to be seeking knowledge. And don't make it weird. Like something, sometimes it's so weird. Like, like it's better to be around a teacher that is easygoing and you could just chat with than somebody that demands awe of them and demands respect of them. And speaking from like my own experiences when I was a kid, sometimes it's like, you know, some... 
situations is so weird that makes you feel so uncomfortable around them you know but around if you have like really nice wholesome teachers really kind teachers like like alhamdulillah the teachers i had have been very kind um but not not from like when i was a kid when i was a kid you have to like you know it's so weird it's so weird you know it's just uncomfortable i remember i volunteered at an islamic school one time and and uh it was my first day there volunteering and they had like an assembly thing in the morning and they brought out the 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 children who are memorizing the quran they're not even students in the school but they're the students are part of the masjid the you know the 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 hiv school you know and you know they said oh these students are memorizing quran you must respect them all the time you must honor them all the time like this kind of stuff you know and like uh, 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 when i was there i'm going like this what is going on what is going on <laughs> i'm like looking at my friends i knew my friends who worked there i'm like what's happening here you know <laughs> this is so weird if you put your children in that mentality thinking they're going to learn the deen thinking that you know they're, they're going to be inspired to seek knowledge and to have taqwa of Allah that's just weird for me it did not click for me at least anyways but alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah you know may Allah make it easy for all of you and your parents for you to communicate with them you know if you really want to get married if you're, if you're at the age around 13 14 right now and you feel like you're going to want to get married you know sooner than later be responsible show your parents especially you young men show your parents that you are responsible men you do everything they tell they tell you to do in terms of your ability your chores you're finishing up your homework you're studying you're doing a little bit more learn something off of youtube learn something on the side learn how to learn how to code learn how to trade learn, learn about computers on the side you know the school system you know not every school prepares you for these types of things learn something on the side be be very responsible so that when you do come to your parents and say you know, mom and dad, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I want to get married. I got desires, I got needs, all of these things. I'm, I'm not saying say it like that. Say it in your own way. I'm just, you know, putting it out there. When you do do that, your parents see you, you know, he is a, a responsible young man, responsible young woman. You know, I understand, you know, uh, you know what he's going through. And, you know, maybe they might facilitate you when, when it's time for you, when it's more appropriate of an age for you to get married and make it easier for you or something like this. Instead of just like, if you're just like a, a lazy child that's wasting time all the time, horrible grades. Why, why would they listen to you? Why would they listen to you? You give them nothing to see. You give nothing, nothing for them to show that you are responsible for taking care of another person. Understand? So be upright. Be upright. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna Allah katab al ihsana ala kulli shay." Allah has obligated excellence in everything. So do your best. <clears throat> Anyways, I hope that was some benefit for you guys. May Allah accept it. Subhanakallahumma, I'm gonna go eat. Subhanakallahumma, wa bihamdika shirwa la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.